I like the cation is positively charged. It's more of a chemistry one, but there we go. Let's talk about electric field strength. So this right here, we'll, first of all, uh, let's talk about what electric fields actually are. Just like we did for gravity, it helps to you know define at least how we're going to be drawing something. So if we need to draw electric field lines, they are the direction that a positive test charge would go. What do I mean by test charge? I just mean you have to imagine one. Now this right here is going to be a situation like this is this is like a plus that's actually just kind of pinned to the wall so to speak and then we're going to see hey if I dropped for example a um, yeah some kind of positive test charge right here where would it go so let's just say I placed it right here well remember it's a little plus here where would a plus want to go would it want to go towards it or away from this well it would want to go away because they're like charges they repel so in other words it's going to want to go you know outwards like radially outwards like this and if i place it over here where would it go well it wants to go whoops i'm just bad at drawing straight lines but there we go and so on and so on so can you see this right here in this case right here it'll go radially outwards these right here will be the electric field lines okay so this right here I'll just be drawing these right here. These are E, E for electric field. Now, um, this one, however, what if I've got a plus and a minus that are pinned? Now, don't think these ones right here are going to attract or repel each other. Let's assume they're actually stuck. They're sort of like, you know, nailed to the wall or something. Now I imagine my positive test charge. So I imagine I place it, uh, I don't know, maybe right here. Where will it want to go? Well, it's close. If I put a little plus here, a plus wants to go away from the plus, so it's going to go away. All right, so that's kind of easy. But what happens now? What about over here? If I place it right here, a plus, it wants to go in. So actually, there's going to be you know a line inwards. And then if I want to, I can do a few other things. Like I can say, oh well, it's going to want to go out. Uh, for example, away from here, but it's also going to want to go towards here. So that means it wants to go sort of away, and it's probably going to curve. This near is going to want to go away and curve, and maybe it goes, you know, wider and curves and so on. So something, you know, like this. So there's these arrows right here coming in. There's these these arrows right here mostly going out, and these are here will be the electric fields. Now, if you're not sure about how these are here work, uh, it actually helps to look at a little animation. So I've got one from PHET. I love them. And so let's just say, so I'm going to be looking at the electric field. And I'm going to put a little positive out there. And remember what a positive should look like? Positives, uh, let's say I place that, the lines should go away. And do you notice it's drawn like a bunch of little arrows going away from it? Notice as I move it, you know, the arrows move, but it's still, you know, they're still always going away. Now, by the way, you could draw like a little, you could put a little sensor here, and this will kind of tell you like the strength of that. So it not only tells you the direction, but also tells you the strength of as I'm closer, it gets really big. As I'm further away, the arrow gets shorter, but still, you know, directed radially outwards. Now, what if, for example, I had just like I had before, my plus here and my minus here, what would happen then? Well, do you notice then, uh, do you see this little direction of the fields here? So notice it goes kind of out and around like I drew. And over here it goes kind of out and around as well. And it sort of goes wider and so on. So these right here, this is really more accurately what it looks like. Uh, but do you notice it still matches my little graph? Now one thing that's really nice to know is the density of your field line. So what do I mean by that? Like. It seems a bit arbitrary, you know, like, well, okay, we're drawing them, but this really will tell you where a positive really would go. Um, but what we do is the convention we use, it seems a bit arbitrary, how many lines do I draw? Do I draw eight? Do I draw four? Do I draw 10? But at least you can compare things. Something that's got more lines drawn means it's a stronger electric field. If it's something has less lines drawn around it, then it's gonna be weaker. So we, we can kind of at least tell comparatively. So let's do a few more examples of drawing field lines. Let's say this time we have a plus and a plus. So these two are now sort of nailed to the wall. What happens then? Well, again, if I'm a positive, I want to go away from this one. You know, if I have my little test charge, I place it here. It wants to go away from here, but it also wants to go away from this one. So it turns out it's going to do something like, you know, like that. And one over here will go like this. It's a certain symmetry to it. And these ones right here will go down, and this one here will go kind of down like that. Of course, it wants to go out and out, and out, and out, and out, and out, because in other words, it's gonna to wanna to go away. So these are here are your electric field lines, that was actually okay. Now, what about this one? What about two parallel plates where the top one is positive, the bottom one is negative? Then what happens? Well, 
if I place my little test charge right here, remember it's always a positive test charge. I place a positive here, does it want to go towards a positive? It does not, it wants to go down. So notice I'm going to be drawing these, you know, these lines like this right here. So this right here is what's going to happen now. Um, it's not just that they go down. What about at the edge? Well, at the edge, it's going to actually curve. And in fact, if you're asked to draw these, you need to draw these edges. These edges right here are really important. Okay, So always draw these edge effects where they start to curve. Now let's actually quantify this electric field strength, this thing called E right here. So we've got E equals, we have an equation for it. It's in your data booklet, which is nice. It just goes F over Q. Okay, so let's look at the units for these. So what's the units for force? I'll just start with the second one. Force is going to be in Newtons. Charge, remember, is in Coulombs. And of course, I can draw this one. Uh, what about electric field strength? Well, if you don't know, just take a look at it. It goes F over Q. That means it must be Newtons per Coulomb. Okay, great. So I'll say Newtons, Coulomb to the minus one. Hooray! Now we've got the next one. Uh, what about parallel plates? If we have two pieces of metal right here that have some kind of potential difference across them. So this ready, maybe like this, so here I have a PD, you know, equals some V, some voltage, you know, or potential difference, that's what we call it. Now, of course, across this one right here, we have uh, this distance right here. This is going to be D, you know, that's the distance between these two parallel plates. That's why I put this down when parallel lines have so much in common. It's a shame they'll never meet. <laughs> So we have an equation for this as well that governs this behavior. So the electric field uh, in between these parallel plates right here is just going to be V over D. And again, that's another equation you get on your data booklet. Now what's the potential difference across the plates? So that's uh, measured in volts. Distance between the plates is going to be in meters. So the electric field strength is still going to be measured in newtons per coulomb. Okay, so I'm still going to say that. But there's some alternate units, aren't there? You could say it's actually in volts per meter. That could also work technically because V is in volts, D is in meters. So there's a few different ways to do it, but the most common uh, unit that we use, the accepted one, is actually newtons per coulomb. So let's look at a situation where we have two parallel charge plates that are separated by a distance D, and there's a potential difference of V in between them. So in other words, this right here, the potential difference equals V. And just like we had before right here, this distance right here, that's going to be D. Okay. And we know that the electric field strength between them is E. And now we have another situation where we're saying, hey, what happens with the electric field strength if the distance between these two is doubled? In other words, D gets twice as big. What happens? Well, let's take a look and see what uh, the equation is. So first, it helps to have an equation for it. So E equals, and remember, it's the one uh, for parallel plates. It's just V over D. Now, this kind of question is what I like to call a ratios question. Ratio because, you know, the, you don't know the value of V, you don't know the value of D, but you're just asking what happens if, you know, something is doubled or tripled or, you know, some number changes. And a good way to solve these is by doing a ratio. In other words, I always do like, you know, new equation divided by old equation. So I'll just define this here. So my old equation, so to speak, is just going to be E equals V over D. That'll be my first one. And then I'm going to take a new one. I need a new equation, so I'll call it E2. And that's just where I make all my changes. So did V change? Nope, didn't. That stayed the same. But D changed. So D changed. It became uh, 2D since it's doubled. So it'll be 2D. And this here will be my new equation. And all I have to do, I mean, remember, if you've done this a lot of times, you'll kind of skip a lot of these steps. But just to show you what I would do, I would actually just write down this equation. So I always do new over old. So in other words, E2, which is V over 2D, whoops, uh, that's going to be divided by the original equation, which is V over 2D. Uh, not 2D, sorry, just D. Okay, if I do that, what happens if I divide a fraction by a fraction? Well, I multiply it by the reciprocal. So that means I'm going to flip this bottom one. I'm going to flip it upside down and multiply it. So let's start off with first on the top. We still have our V over 2D from before, but now I'm going to multiply it by D over V. And if you're really careful with your units, uh, sorry, with uh, your algebra here, you'll notice then things here cancel out. So everything right here cancels out. All I'm left with then is a 1 over 2. So I have E2 equals, uh, well, sorry, E2 over E equals 1 over 2. Well, that means then if I want to get E2 by itself, what do I do? I just multiply my E under the other side, so it becomes just E over 2. And there's my answer. 
Now, if you've done uh, a lot of ratios kind of questions, you won't even bother with these steps right here. It can be faster, but I'm just trying to show you how we can do it. And it should make sense then that the uh, electric field strength should be smaller, at least our intuition should help us, should be smaller because these plates got bigger, you know? And if you think about it, this here just got twice as uh, big, and since it's one over that, and that's why it's actually one over two.